Hello, my name is Austin Edmister. I'm the Planetarium Operator and STEM Educator at Ella Sharp Museum. And today I'm going to be bringing you a really fun little project that has to do with light. Now, one of the important things about light is that it travels pretty much in a straight line through space. Uh, there are ways to interrupt this or change this, like my glasses or gravity. Lots of different things can change this, but normally light just kind of continues on in a straight line line. Now, there are some cool ways to take advantage of this that create very cool effects with very simple stuff. We're going to use this idea that light travels in a straight line for a really cool project called Camera Obscura. Uh, and what this is going to do is it turns a room with a window into a camera. And I love this effect. It's very cool to see. And I want to walk you through it. Now, let's get a little bit more uh, idea of how light travels in a straight line and how that creates this camera obscura effect. So I have a marker here, and we're going to draw a very simple thing, just something like a tree. Okay? This tree, outside, lots of grass, little flowers. And if I'm outside looking at this tree, I see the light from the bottom of the tree travels in a straight line up to my eyes, light from the top of the tree, this is a very short tree, travels to my eyes, and I can see the picture. Now the reason this works is because if we look at my eyeball, what's happening in there is if we draw our eyeball, it's a very bad eyeball, <clears throat> and we're looking this way, still towards the tree, and this is the back of my eye, where the retina is, where it collects the light, and here is our pupil, this dark center spot. The light from the top of the tree is traveling, it's a very short tree, is traveling through my eye and collecting right here on the back of my eye, but the light from the bottom of the tree is traveling in a straight line, and it ends up on the top of the back of my eye. And this also works side to side. So the right side of the tree ends up on the left side of my eye, and the left side of the tree ends up on the right side of my eye. So you have a completely inverted image. Now, normally, when you're in a room with a window, this is happening, except it's happening all over the window. So the entire window are little pupils that are letting in light, and it just makes the room look bright. So if you open your window to a bright sunny day, it's just going to look bright in there. But what if we took that big window and turned it into one little pupil, or one little hole? it would act exactly like our eye's pupil. The image from the bottom would come through in a straight line and collect somewhere on the top of the room, and the image from the top of the tree would collect in a straight line and go right where it sees itself through the hole. So it just travels through a straight line through the hole and ends up somewhere else. And so just like this eyeball is creating a picture using this little pupil, we can do that in a room with just blocking out the window. Uh, this has very simple supplies. Uh, I like to use cardboard to block out the window, but you can also use uh, trash bags or a very thick blanket. We also have simple things like tape or thumbtacks, something to hold up the material and also to help you block out more light. And then I like to use aluminum foil. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a window in one of the big pieces of cardboard that's blocking out my window and use aluminum foil in that window, and then I'm going to poke a hole in the aluminum foil. I'm going to show you how to do this. It's really simple. And from that, we can get a camera obscura effect where we can turn our whole bedroom into an eyeball or a camera where we project the light from outside our window into our room. 
and it looks really cool. So here I have a mostly uh, completed window. Uh, I still have my window here that I prepared in the middle. Uh, the special part about this is um, I'm going to leave that open so that I can cover it with aluminum foil. And the reason I choose aluminum foil is it's easier to make a precise hole in aluminum foil than it is in the cardboard. Uh, so I'm going to tape this aluminum foil around the edge so that it covers my window. Making sure to block off the light that comes through the aluminum foil. It doesn't have to be on there perfectly. This is also the part where your neighbors are probably starting to worry about you if they can see this window. Uh, hopefully mine are a little more forgiving. But here we go. A completed blocked off window. It's not perfect. There is a little bit of light getting in. Um, I have some spots where I can take some black tape and kind of try to fill in the spots. I might fill in this little corner on the, on the other side. Uh, I have some socks over here covering up a little bit of light coming into the tape. But otherwise, it's a pretty well covered up window. And at this point, uh, I can take something sharp like a pen or a pencil, even like a needle, uh, and start to poke a circular hole in this aluminum foil, allowing the light to come into my bedroom and we can actually see this cool camera obscura effect. So here I have my little window and I'm going to take my pencil and very carefully, right in the center with a sharp pencil or a pen, just kind of very lightly poke a circular hole in there. You may want to round it out, give it a little bit of structure, uh, and there we go. It's a nice clean hole and light is now coming through almost entirely through this hole, not everywhere else in the window. Let's look at some photos I took of my bedroom after I closed off the window and sort of observed the camera obscura effect. This first picture I'm showing you is about what it would look like when you first darken the room. You're not going to see much detail because your eye might be adjusted to brighter light. Uh, so you can see a little bit of detail there, but the second photo really shows off the level of detail that pops out as your eyes adjust to the darkness. You can see the branches of the trees, some clouds in the background, really cool stuff. And if you have a good view, you've got a really good view with your camera obscura. Uh, this third photo was kind of fun for me, actually seeing the cars parked in the parking lot below. And occasionally someone would pull in or drive away and you would see that moving around just like a real video. And then this last photo was one I took when I tried this project out the first time and I was really lucky to have some very beautiful clouds. And that's a recommendation I have is try to do this on a day where it's bright sunlight, maybe you have a few clouds around, uh, something pretty to see, right? Uh, I also, some tips for doing this, don't do this at nighttime. You're going to have a lot of trouble actually trying to see any detail at night with the very little light that's available. And also, try not to do it when the sun is looking directly through your camera obscura because the sunlight coming through the hole can be very bright and it kind of ruins the view. But uh, it's fun to try out with different visuals and different settings. Uh, give it a go and let us know if you have success with it. We'd love to see your photos. Otherwise, this is Austin again from Ella Sharp Museum. Thank you.